Everybody will. We'll stand and take up the offering this morning. Good to see everybody this morning. Good pray for service. Pray the Lord just have his way here this morning. Pray for Brother Terry. See, he comes most of all, pray for the lost. Travis, you pray for us.
says, Dear friends, thank you for your contribution. $25 per pasture. R. Santos, it has now been nearly three months since we have heard daily reports on how the role of COVID-19 virus is in our entire world. As I think of all that is currently happening, it makes me more keenly aware that the Lord's return is drawing near. I know that the time is completely up to the Lord, but I also know that we are called upon to occupy until He comes. More than ever, we need to redeem the times and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our needy, needy world. This is, a, this is still a strict lockdown. There is still a strict lockdown in much of Asia, so many of our pastors are trying to help people in their areas of daily sustenance. If you wish to help them in these separate, please mark your gift crisis. Uh, Pastor Montel Santago continues to train young people in his New Bible College, he steps out by faith in the past, this past year knowing he would need $200 uh, each month to house and feed the students. $25 each month takes care of one student. We're attempting to send him $200 monthly to help. If you can help, please mark your gift of any amount to MS student. Pastor Benson Office has a small campus for his Bible College and new youth camp ministry. The adjoining property owners blocked his access, so he was forced to buy a right away where we were able to send enough to get things started, but they still need $4,900 to complete this transaction. Please earnestly pray for this urgent need. If you can help, please mark your gift access. Many of the pastors are working on building projects during this lockdown. If you, if you wish to help on any of these projects, please mark your gift building. If you have a particular pastor you wish to help, please include his name. Thank you for your continued faithfulness even in this changing time. So let, let's continue to occupy for his glory until he comes. Thank you for being part of our heartbeat team. Yours for souls, Jim and Bonnie Johnson. Uh, yes, if you're still shut up at home, please check out our website, heartbeatmissions.com. Do pray for this, pray for this uh, ministry. Uh, it's a crazy word. Crazy word. <clears throat> to get into the bulletin here, uh, June 14th special on the youth group, also June 14th business meeting, June 20th uh, uh, fun day to, here to church will be at 12 o'clock, uh, June 28th special on for the building fund, and July 9th through the 12th is Ebenezer Bible Camp. We're going to make a final decision Wednesday, right? Uh, one way or another, we'll yeah. figure out what we're going to do when. So, uh, do pray about that. Pray the Lord will just have His way in it. Uh, now, also, July 12th special offer for the youth group. Also, July 12th business meeting. And July 26th special offer for the building fund. August 1st will be back to school base. Do pray for that. Pray the Lord will have His way there. Anything else? Is that it? Uh, if that's it, we'll get into prayer requests. Jalen Sutherland, Francis Dow, David Ward, Deb Channing, Teresa Stout, Larry Stout, Alex Tressler, Stacey Keith, Becky Wilson, Gary and Helen Cross, Ebenezer Christian Home, Doug Cross, Zach Walton, Dennis and Hazel, Youth Group, David Wilson, Larry Polly, Harold Wright, Linda Holland, Jesse Cross, Clarence Braden, Christine Harrison, Erlen Lay, Ashley White, Nancy Jordan, Juanita Purdue, George Lowe, Nancy and Charlie Green, Jeremy and Natasha Blues, Michelle Worley, Jenny Petty Family, Betty Cross, Johnny Triplett, Billy Jones Fadden, Jason and Sierra, Terry and Melissa, Hayden and Family, Steve and Angie, Christopher Harris, Mike Carroll, Rosie Lewis, Asa Main, Jane Kirby, Aaron Steele, Stella Payne, New Building Land, Damon Buchanan, Susan Hicks, Carter Harris, Sandy Leonard, Clifton and Adam Worley, Kennedy Greer, Dorothy Matheson, Bailey Purdue, Carolyn Porter, Mary Grace Haymore, Bryce and Joyce, Wanda Ford, Curry's family, Andy Lowe, Clark Cross, Donna Namey, Tyler Taylor, Taylor, Rick Baltman, Earl Fritz, Dan Stout, Louis Markham, John Murray Bishop, Ken Bernard, Reason family, Carol Forster, Donna Porter, and the church. Edgar's family, Henry Cross, Charles Worley, Megan and Eli, Chet Phipps, Daryl Adams, Melissa's family, Brandon Greenwell, Peggy Saunders, Jason Roderick, 
Joel Duggar, Tony Hammond, Johnny and Christine Haymore, Amy and Josh Clausen from the United States of America. Anybody else? Is that it? That's it. Any birthdays coming up this week? Any anniversaries? Anything at all? Martin's birthday. You either take it in here or take it outside. <laughs> Everybody stand and sing happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. 
somebody this morning has a song on your heart, word, or a testimony before we go on. Hearts and minds are clear today. 
And we're going to open our Bibles up to look at Revelation chapter number 21. Revelation chapter number 21. When you find your place this morning, if you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. Be much in prayer for service today. We just want to say and do that which God would give us. We ask you to do the same. You just do what God would have you to do. Tell you to shout, shout. Tell you to sing, sing. Tell you to raise your hand, raise your hand. Amen. Now, you're not going to offend us. You're not going to scare us. We've seen a lot of things over the years. Amen. Now, but make sure that you do it in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, amen. Revelations chapter number 21. And we're going to begin to read it in verse number 1. The Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Let us pray. Every fall we come to you today, Lord, we just humble ourselves before thee again. Lord, I thank you for the sweet services we've already had in this Sunday school lesson this morning. Lord, I pray, Lord, thank you for the good songs we've heard in the children's choir. God, I pray, dear Lord, that you'll just help us now, Lord, to get the world off of our mind. God, just get our mind focused here on the church, focused on what it is that you would have for us, God. Because I know you didn't send us all this way out today. And Lord, for nothing, let us leave here in. But I pray, God, you'll open up the windows of heaven, you'll pour it out upon us, Lord, and upon the people. God, and open up our hearts and we'll be ready to receive it. God, not only receive it, Lord, that we'll take it in in our daily life. I pray, God, for all those that are on the prayer list, that those requests that's been mentioned, some spoken, some unspoken, Lord, that, that God, you know every name and every burden that's on there. God, you know the one that's in the people's hearts that's here today. I don't know where they come from. I don't know what they're going through in their daily lives. But, Lord, you know all about it. Lord, I pray today that God will just help us to see what it is. Lord, you'll help us to be the light that you want us to be. Well, that little light song that they sung there, Lord, about letting that light shine. Lord, help today, dear God, that you'll shine bright. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in all things. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. A lot of us have heard the scripture here this morning that uh, uh, preached before, different things. I was thinking this week, I wonder how many of us uh, have took time, uh, took time probably recently. Uh, uh, I know I have recently, but I took time just to kind of consider and ponder uh, just on what heaven would be like. Amen. Uh, just, uh, just think about just how glorious it's going to be over that. Uh, now, half of you, some of you probably thought, yeah, I've thought about it. The other half, y'all are a lot younger than we are, so you probably don't think about it very much. Uh, but I was thinking, you know, so many times uh, we get we, we have in our mind just what heaven's going to be. Amen. Uh, and we can read right here in the book of Revelation that we know the old heaven and the old earth is going to pass away. We're going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And we won't get into, uh, into the, uh, the preaching and the doctrine of why that's going to happen today. But we just want to talk and take a little glimpse and take a little look at what, what heaven really is. And, and some things uh, about heaven. But I'm saying here, you can read in the book of Revelation here in chapter number 21. You can begin to read down and you'll find out some things uh, about heaven. John gives us a really uh, a really vivid description, a mind-blowing description, if you want to say that, uh, about just how heaven's going to be. Amen. Uh, he begins to talk there. He begins to say there about how that God's going to be there. And, uh, he begins to talk about the stones. And uh, you read on down through here and you begin to read about how just the, the glory that's going to be over there. And all of us have an imagination, uh, have an image in our mind uh, about just what heaven's going to be. Some of us think about those streets of gold. Amen. Uh, I mean, you know, that's grand and glorious to think about, isn't it? Uh, 
I mean, just how grand a place he is over there. That the streets are paved with gold. Now, we can read on down. You get down about verse number eighteen. You begin to talk. And he begins to talk about the foundations of, and the walls of the sea and, and the the precious stones that are there. The walls of jasper and uh, and sardius and on and so on and so on and so on. Uh, about just how precious this city is. Can you imagine it, amen? Uh, uh, you know, imagine just how good this place is going to be. Uh, but what I do like about it is, I mean, when you just think about it, he tells us over the book of Revelation 20, uh, 22, uh, he talks about the river of life, uh, the river of life flowing from the throne of God. Uh, uh, what a beautiful place it is. And I see now, you know, some things that we're going to see over there. Uh, we're going to get to walk in those streets of gold. We're going to get to walk down by the riverside. Uh, hey, we're going to get to see Jesus. Amen. Uh, if for no other reason to go, that's good enough right there. Amen. Uh, because Jesus. Jesus is going to be there. The one that done it all for you and me. Amen. He didn't have to give up all that glory. He didn't have to leave that place for you and I. But He was willing to do that. Hey, we'll get to see some of the old prophets. We'll get to see some of the old apostles over there that, that told us the stories and gave us the stories that we gave to our children as they, as they sung here this morning. As they learned downstairs in Sunday school class. We'll get to see some of those things and just the, the reality of be, be, be made so much more clear of, of the things that happened. Uh, once again, uh, we'll get to go over there and when we get over there, we'll be able to see uh, uh, some of our family and some of, the, some of the ones that went on before us. Uh, some of those saints that had paved the way. Uh, some of those grandmas and grandpas uh, uh, who we remember going to when we were just children uh, and them telling us about the Lord. Uh, or, or some of them when we remember uh, just how good they was to us and how they treated us uh, and the love that they showed us. Uh, we'll get to see moms and moms and dads uh, who've already gone on before us over yonder. Uh, hey, we'll get to see spouses that's gone on before us. Uh, hey, when we get over yonder. Uh, hey, what a place heaven's going to be. Amen. Uh, what a place heaven's going to be. Listen, I tell you what, uh, I could stand up here and I could talk for the next day uh, and never just tell you how good heaven is. Amen. Amen. Uh, I could do that right on. But I was thinking about all the things that's going to be over there. And all the things uh, that we're going to get to see. Yeah. But you know what? That's not what God, the message that God gave us. See, man, I, I, what the message the Lord really gave us this week, God, as we was beginning to try to study and pray and all these things uh, about what the Lord had us to do, is I know there's going to be some beautiful things over there. God. I know there's going to be some spectacular things over there. God. But I want to talk this morning a little bit uh, about what not, what's not going to be over there. Amen. Uh, some things that's not going to be in heaven. Amen. I, I tell you what, I can come up with a big list, but this is this the list that God gave me. I've seen some of the things that's not going to be over there. You know one thing for certain not going to be over there? Time's not going to be over there. Amen. I, listen, I know a lot of you, some of you are young, I, some of you has is, got your whole life ahead of you. I mean, but you know when you get a little older, you start thinking about time. Amen. Time means a little more something to it. So, hey, but you know what? We're yonder, we're not going to have to worry about time anymore. Amen. The Bible tells us that a day is a thousand, a thousand is a day. Time does not mean anything when you're in eternity. Amen. When you're going to be there forever. I'll tell you another thing. We ain't going to have to worry about something showing up late. Amen. Because time don't mean anything over there. Amen. We ain't going to have to worry about setting an alarm clock. Because time don't mean anything over there. Amen. Hey, you know what? We're over yonder there. Time is just a thing of the past. No need to rush down here. We get in such a hurry. We've always got to get something and go somewhere and be somewhere. Always got something to do. But over yonder, we can take time to enjoy what really matters. Amen. What really matters. We'll get to walk over there and you're talking about those streets of gold and those walls of jasper. You'll have time to enjoy those things. Amen. Hey Amen. Listen, you have time over there like we've never had. We're living a fraction of time right now. We're living just a little moment of time here on this earth. 
But one day a turn is come and I, and I won't have to worry about those things no more. Amen. Right, amen. Won't have to worry about planning no schedule. I won't have to worry about planning no vacation. Amen. Uh, my wife and I were already fighting about vacation already. Amen. Uh, listen, you know what? Uh, we'll have to worry about trying to make those things hurry and trying to get those things planned down. And, and all those things. Uh, won't be no time over yonder. Uh, I, I'm so glad to know uh, that I'll have time to spend with Him. Amen. Uh, I, I remember back when I was a kid. Uh, I remember when we went somebody went to somebody's house. So we didn't just rush in and rush out. Amen. I, that's back. I mean, it's been so long ago. That's when you actually went over to somebody's house just because you wanted to. Amen. I, not because you had something you had to do. But, hey, I say, you know, it'd be time when you get over there and you just spend a little time uh, down by the river. Amen. Uh, down by the river with Jesus. Uh, down by the river with some of the old saints. Uh, down by the river with some of the old family. Uh, hey, no time doesn't matter matter over there. Amen. Okay, something else that doesn't matter. Won't be over there. You won't have to worry about money of being over there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Listen, now all these people, uh, we work our whole lives. And there's nothing wrong. I mean, I believe you ought to work. Yeah. If you're able to work, I believe you ought to work. The Bible says if you won't work, you say ye. And as you can tell, I like to eat. Amen. Uh, I mean, I like to eat pretty good. So I'm saying over the yonder though, we won't have to worry about money. Money's not going to enter into heaven. Uh, Silver and gold. That's what, what did uh, uh, Peter and John tell that old boy uh, sitting by the gate of beautiful? Uh, sat by the gate begging for elms as people went in. Uh, what did he tell them over the night? Silver and gold we have none. Uh, hey, because silver and gold is not what really matters. Uh, silver and gold is not going to get you over there. You can gain the whole world. Uh, lose your soul. Amen. Uh, it ain't going to get you into heaven. Uh, every dime that you can hoard up, uh, every dime that you can take with you, uh, it ain't going to mean nothing uh, because it ain't in it. Over there. Amen. There's not even an end over there. Bible, you know why money's not going to be there? I'll tell you the biggest reason money's not going to be there. I'll tell you the second biggest reason. First, second biggest reason is this is because that the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. For the love of money, the desire to have and obtain, money itself does not have any. It's not evil whatsoever. It's just it's money. You know, I mean, it's just it's just money. But the love and the desire to obtain that thing, we work our lives away. We strive our lives away. People cheat their lives away. They steal their lives away. Yeah, just so they might have a little more of it. Now, you're not going to have to worry about money over there. Now, listen, I'm worried about money over here on this side of eternity. Uh, many a day. Did you? Uh, I've worried many times how am I going to make the bills. Uh, i worried how am I going to pay for this or pay for that. Uh, how am I going to give my kids more than what, my, what I had? How am I going to pay for that or this? Uh, that you don't want to uh, over yonder. I don't have to pay for it. I'm going to tell you number one reason ain't going to be no money over yonder. Uh, number one reason and there ain't going to be no money over there is because Jesus paid it all Amen. over on Calvary. I don't need no money to get over yonder. I can't buy my way in. I can't sell my way in because what Jesus done on Calvary is what matters. Amen. I don't need the money over there because Jesus paid a debt that I could not pay. He paid a debt that He did not owe. He paid it all and He paid it for you. If you don't like that, so I got another one for you. There's an old account that he sat a long ago. Well, is there? There's a lot of times in my life that you can say, how in the world does that boy make bills? I mean, there's more money going out than they are coming in. You young folks here, y'all got a bunch of kids, y'all know. <laughs> hey man, y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey man, if I get a little bit from the old older. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, so many times I've laid awake at night, worked myself to death, day after day after day. You know, you look back, you, you got kids of your own, you look back and you think, now I know why dad was rough. Amen. I know why dad was rough on us sometimes. Amen. I know why sometimes we had to skip by a few times. Do you know what I'm beyond this? This is what I like. Thank you, Lord. I was thinking this week, man, Melissa and I, we got, we, we, yesterday we went to the grocery store. She said, we don't need a few things. She just made a, we make a list. What good does that list do? <laughs> hey, man, listen, we just need a few things. I think we need some onions. We need a few other things. 
We went in there for a few things and we walk out with a two hundred dollar basket. You know what I mean? Which that don't take a few things anymore. I say you know we're going in with all this stuff. We'll put on my heart, I'm gonna have to preach this stuff. You are what you eat. Hey man, my wife would be chicken, just so you know. Me, I'd probably be a little dead. Amen. But I was thinking, you know, I was thinking our spiritual life, it's the same way. We don't want to be eating. But what I really got to think about was money. Man, it takes money to eat, don't it, boys? Man, I bet it takes some money to eat. My wife, when we first got married, if we spent $50 at the grocery store, I thought, man, I'm alive. How am I going to pay for this? Amen. I mean, we had enough food to feed it. I mean, to feed the family. Now we go in there and we spent $200 and we barely had enough for her and I to make it through the week. Glory to God. I see over yonder. Money ain't going to matter. You know why? Because the banquet table's already set. I ain't got to worry about going to the cupboard. I don't have to worry about whether there's something in the cupboard to eat because he's got it spread. He's got it already spread. I'll tell you what else won't be over there. You won't have to worry about no lamps over there, will you? Light bulbs burning out. Amen. Lights won't. You don't have to worry about paying the paying light bill either. Amen. You know why? The Bible tells us we have no need of light over there. You know what he said here in the book of Revelation, chapter number 21, and verse number 23. Uh, he said this. He said, The city need had no, no need of the sun, uh, neither of the moon to shine in it. Uh, for the glory of God did like me, uh, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Amen. No need to worry about whether the light's going to turn on or not when you flip that. Uh, no worry about whether I'm going to have to call Jason come turn my power on. Hey, man, uh, get it fixed back up uh, because it's already shining bright. Uh, right. It's already over there. You know something else I ain't going to have to worry about? Uh, I ain't going to have to worry about winter time. Hey, man, uh, I ain't going to have to worry about whether the heat comes on or not. Uh, why? Because Jesus lights up the sign. Hey, the whole earth holds heaven. Hey, man. He's going to light her all up. I'm thinking, you know, so many things over there, so many things going on in our world. Things happening right now. I'm glad some things that won't be over there. Won't be no bills over there. Won't be none of that mess. I think some mess won't need over there. They won't need no repairmen over there either, will it? Look, I worked in construction all my life. Won't be no electricians. Won't be no plumbers, won't be no carpenters. Thank God there won't be no Toyota mechanics. <laughs> hey, man. Won't have to worry about that junk breaking down and tearing up with you. Hey, man, over yonder, there ain't gonna be none of that and stuff. You know why? Because Jesus can fix anything. Amen. Hey, man. Yeah, he can. God can fix it all. You know what? With the Mister Fix. Maytag will repair man. Huh? Whatever. Listen, I'm glad I've got somebody I can go to when we get the real mess fixed. Did you know? I'm glad over yonder all my mess is going to be passed away. Over there, I won't have to worry about what anybody else thinks. I won't have to worry about what anybody else, how I can try to do things on my own. Because Jesus paid that bill and got it done over yonder. What a God. God doesn't need our help to fix anything because He can fix everything. Amen. He can fix it all. You can't turn the news on. You can't turn TV on without seeing the things that's going on in our society today. You want to know something else on the way over there? Racism. We don't have to worry about. We talked about that in Sunday school a little bit this morning. You know, you don't have to worry about racism. You know what the Bible says? The Bible tells us that for God is no respecter of persons. Amen. Don't matter. Red, yellow, black, or white. They're all precious in His sight. Amen. Amen. It don't matter what they are, what the world think wants you to believe. It don't matter how you feel. Hey, I can tell you right now, over there, all that matters is not the outward appearance of a man, but what is on the inside. Amen. Yeah. This old flesh and bone ain't going to enter into heaven. Over yonder, the only thing that's going to enter in over there is the soul of this man. Yeah. That's right, you know. I tell you something else. That's something we don't have to worry about no coronavirus, are we? No. Hey, man. We don't have to worry about no sickness. Or, hey, the Bible told us right there. We don't have to worry about sickness over there. You know, we, don't get me wrong. I don't try to make light of anything that's happened in our society lately. But I can tell you this much. The things that we worry about over here 
what if if a virus takes this whole body out? And it may do it. I mean, it, I mean, it may get me before I get home. I have no idea. But what I can tell you is this: What does that matter? If a body, something's gonna take this body out anyway. Some look, I don't, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not looking to go today, amen, uh, but I'm ready if I do. But uh, here's the thing, uh, we got to quit worrying uh, <coughs> so much about this flesh and bone uh, and start getting concerned about what's on the inside. I'm glad to know there won't be no sickness over yonder. Uh, read Revelation, chapter number 22, and verse number 1 and 2. Uh, he said, over there about the river of life flowing from the throne of God, uh, and on either side of it uh, was a tree of life uh, for the healing of the nations. Uh, listen, I ain't going to have to worry about getting sick over there because Jesus, uh, because God, uh, done away with all the sickness. Amen. Don't we'll have to worry about masking up, gloving up. You know, it's crying shame. I said the other day. Now, Riley does. There's a little bottle of, of hand sanitizer right here. I'm surprised. He, had, he must not have found it today. Because every, he goes around and gives everybody hand sanitizer. That's just the time we live in, I guess. I think he just likes squirting the bottle. That's all that really matters to him. But, you know, first thing we will look for is to see if we're ready to clean our hands. Amen. Something I, I keep a ball of hand sanitizer in every vehicle I drive. And when I get out, when I get back to the car from one of who's done, I use hand sanitizer. Ninety-nine. We have had more personal hygiene improvements. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. We've had more personal hygiene improvements over the last few months than America's probably ever seen in its life. Amen. Not saying that's a bad thing. But do you know what? That's like taking a dirty glass. In our Christian life, that's like, in, in, our, in our personal lives, that's like taking a dirty glass and washing the outside. And not concerned about what's on the inside. Amen. Still dirty and filthy. Do you want to drink from it? Amen. Do, do you want to get you a glass of water from it? Listen, let me just tell you something. When I go out there, there's a spring by the, by, by the road we live on. runs out by the side of the road. Riley loves to ride this, the side by side out there and get a drink of water. Let me just tell you something. When we get out there, if, if I got a cup or anything, and Riley likes to drink straight from the spout. Hey Amen. I mean, he just likes to get in. We get out there, if I got a cup, I mean, I'm going to wash the inside of that cup out because it's been in the razor. Hey Amen. I, I mean, it's got dust and dirt and everything else in it. I'm not just going to wash the outside, but I want to get the inside. That's what matters. That's what I'm drinking from. Amen. I, let, let me just tell you something right here. I, quit worrying about all the outside stuff uh, and get the inside stuff cleaned up. Amen. I may think you're the best person in the world, but that's not going to get you to heaven. Ain't going to have to worry about a virus over there. Amen. Ain't going to have to worry about rights and all those things. You know, There's all kinds of things out there. So here's the best, one of the best things that's not going to be over there. I ain't going to have to worry about Satan being over there. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to have to worry about the devil. Amen. I started to say, I started to get on one that's talking to me about Riley. You see her come in and Jason come in and Riley was still outside. I walk outside and he was with the devil. <laughs> Glory. Uh, that's what's right then. Amen. You never know. Uh, you better watch them. You, you, you hear, you've got to watch everything. I mean, I mean everything. Melissa called me, or told me one day this week. She said, Sierra was, uh, I'm telling all of y'all this morning. Listen, somebody told that mother a while back. said, anything you can and say, live, here's what you got to understand about living in a pastor's house and being a part of a pastor's family. Anything you can, anything you say can and will be used in a sermon against them. Amen. I, I just tell you that. But said she spread and hang up on the, on the yard and said, turn around and Riley was done up in the woods. When Riley loves the woods. That man, he loves the play. Here's what I tell you. you got to be careful. Don't take your back off our children down here. Don't take your back off anything because those Satan is right around the corner. Amen. Amen. Uh, to snatch them up. Uh, to take them away. Uh, and do something with them. Uh, here's what I'm going to tell you. We'll have to worry about that rascal over there. Uh, hey, because he's gone. Uh, he's kicked out. Uh, he can't come back. Amen. Amen. I don't have to worry about him over there. I fight him every day. Through different actions. Through this whole flesh. 
we have to crucify this flesh, and sometimes we let that old sorry rascal slip in. Yeah. Sometimes we let him get the best of us. Over yonder. I won't have to worry about that rascal no more. All this, man, I could go on for hours. I'm going to I can go on for hours about the things that's not going to be in heaven. But here's the one thing I really want to talk to you about. Do you know what's not going to be in heaven? I'm going to tell you right now. I want you, everybody, listen. This ain't going to be in heaven. You will not be in heaven. You will never make it to heaven if you're trusting in yourself. You'll never make it to heaven if you never humbled yourself before God and gave it all to Him. Amen. You will never be in heaven only long enough to, to bow at the Father's knees and at His feet and get kicked out. That's the only time you'll be there unless the blood's been applied. Amen. Is every head's bowed, never eyes closed, every Christian praying in our hearts. <coughs> You want to get there? Do you want to know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven? Don't let one of the things that's not going to be in heaven be you. If you're here today and you've never been saved, would you be honest with yourself and honest with God? Just lift your hand up and it right back down and say, pray for me. I'm lost. I've never asked the Lord in my life. <coughs> You may be here this morning, you may be saying, I don't even have no idea what salvation really is. I don't know your heart. What is salvation? Salvation is a time that we, that we realize that we need help. That we can't do it on our own. <clears throat> that we can't get to heaven. There, there's never been one good. All we have to do is admit that we're a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ is who He said He is. And confess and you shall be saved. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter number nine, or chapter number 10, verse number 13. He said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, I'm not really sure if I'm saved or not. Would you just pray for me? Just sit your hand up and right back down and say, Pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I should be. I want you to help me pray. I get to get that where I should be with God. Just sit your hand up and right back down. Amen. 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 God sees those hands this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I, I've got a burden on my heart. I'd like you to help me pray about it. Just slip it up and it right back down. Amen. God sees hands going up all over the house this morning. I just want you to know today that God is here for you. Whether you raised your hand or whether you didn't. This altar is open for you. Maybe you want to slip out of that pew and come down to the come down to the altar this morning. Would you come? Would you come? Maybe you're here today and you just need to come down and have a little talk with Jesus. You want to thank Him for being so good to you and being in your life. Would you come? Would you come? What a Savior we serve. Things is not going to be in heaven. I'm glad I'm going to be a part of the things that are in heaven. How about you? Anybody else want to come this morning? She's going to finish up playing. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. What a God we have. What a God we have. He said, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Do you know that nobody on this altar can pray for your sins? Pray. You're going to have to get forgiveness of your own sins. They can pray for you. But you'll never get forgiveness until you pray yourself. All these people on this altar this morning, all these people in the pews, everybody in this house can pray for you and want you to go to heaven. And you can want to go to heaven, but if you've never done anything to get there, you're not going to be there. I want you to know today that God loves you and we love you as well. We love you and we're praying for you. Whatever... God puts on your heart. This is the last opportunity you may have. Life's verse that she's going through. This could be the last chance that we have to get things right on the own. Last chance to get things right to get with God. You said, preacher, I can do pray right where I'm sitting. You can. You can pray right where you're at. But if God told you to get out of that seat and come down to this altar, just give it to Him. Just humble yourself and do that. 
Nobody here to make fun of you, pull you out, or drag you out. Just give it to God. Just give it to Him. What a Savior. I hope all is well. I hope everybody here today has got exactly what you need from God. What a Savior. Brother Johnny, you pray for us, please. Good precious Heavenly Father. Father, just thank you. Please just see Sierra and let us know that we know a number. Glad to have you with us. Uh, but we'll have a fun day here. Do make sure that you bring a uh, change of clothes because we do have, we'll have all the water things set up as well. <coughs> so at this time, we'll ask uh, Jason to ask a question on this song. <laughs> Lord, you bless us beyond measure, God. We know that we don't deserve it. Lord God, that you did so good to us. And I pray to God that you just take us off. And Lord, bless us to your benefit. God, boost these kids, Lord. God, help this money, God, to go towards these kids to help them. Lord God, want to serve you more, Lord. I pray to God that you speak us, Lord God. Help us to be a light unto them, Lord God, that maybe one day, Lord God, they, they may... They may want to follow you more, God. Help us, God, to fit this church, help to grow, help us to prosper, Lord God. In your holy, sweet, and precious name. Amen. 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 As I said, do be much in prayer for service tonight. Uh, pray for all those on our prayers. Uh, all church members, do please hang around. We've got business meetings following this. If uh, shake somebody's hand, if you love them, God bless you. If you're with us, love to have you back. <laughs>